Martin, the hitman, Campman, who this week I was thinking about as the UFC is returning to Denmark, or I should say making its debut in Denmark. I thought, why not catch up with the face of Danish MMA, Martin Campman? And there he is. It's been a while since we've talked to him. Martin, so good to see you, my man. How are you doing? You too, Ariel. I'm pretty good. It's been a while Thanks. since we last talked. Yeah, it's been a while. So it's, it's been a while. It's been around three, four years since you walked away from the sport. Before we get to this weekend, what have you been doing over the last three or so years? Well, right now I just got out of uh, I just got out of good training here at the Great Danes. I'm in in Denmark now training Great Danes uh, MMA gym. I got the guys out here standing here. They're watching your show right now. They're <laughs> making faces on the on the on the side of the other side of the window here. So uh, I just got out of training. I'm still a little sweaty. No problem. I jumped in. You know if if. Uh, if, uh, you know, if there's an odd man out, you know, I'll jump in and still get some rounds in and I still get training in. Not like when I was still fighting, but uh, I still get a, I still get some training in, you know, uh, I still it, enjoy training. Is this your own gym? This is like a gym and it's like an association, you know, in Denmark, uh, the way the setup is, is different. You know, there's not that many gyms that's kind of been run as a business. A lot of gyms is like a association that's uh, where you get, you, know, you get subsidized from the, from the government to have sports uh, clubs and, uh, you know, for keeping people engaged in sports and stuff like that. But uh, I'm the coach here and we have a great team, great things, fight uh, gym. And, uh, and we have a lot of good guys, Most mostly amateur guys, but we're, we're working a lot and uh, everybody's improving all the time and uh, hopefully bringing out more guys internationally. Uh, Is the gym in Copenhagen? No, no, we're in uh, Odense. Okay. How far is that from Copenhagen? It's a two-hour drive from. Uh, okay. Two-hour drive from Copenhagen. Yeah. Um, so and you're welcome if you're ever around Denmark. I, I I would love to. Unfortunately, I'm not going to the event this weekend. But one of these days, that would be amazing. I'm wondering. You know, you retired relatively young, and we we often see in in fight sports people retire, and then the event they eventually come back. Just this past week, we found out that Rashad Evans is coming back. Have you ever had the itch to come back? Have you ever thought about it? Oh, I get the itch all the time, all the time. I really enjoy fighting, you know, and uh, out here in Denmark, I also do uh, for some of the commentary for Via Play, who has the, the rights to broadcast UFC. Uh, so I do uh, some of the commentating in Danish. So every time I, I watch a show and commentate, and I'm, I'm watching, walking out of there shadow boxing, you know, <laughs> because I, I enjoy I enjoy MMA. You know, I'm not just a competitor. I'm also a fan. And, of course, I get the itch uh, all the time, but I, I already made a – clear decision to uh, not continue fighting and uh, now I'm, I'm still enjoying training very much and I enjoy coaching and I enjoy helping helping other people uh, get better and improving as fighters and um, you know this this week in Copenhagen we have uh, Marco Matson that I'm coaching and he's he's competing on the on a big spot you know his UFC debut and he's a co-main event here in Denmark so it's a, it's a pretty big deal and he's uh, it's a pleasure to work with him yeah the and, 2016 uh, Olympic silver defend. medalist. That's right. Yeah, he's like a five-time world's Greco-Roman medalist. He's a, he's a stud, and he's uh, he's really improved his game, and um, he's gonna he's gonna do really well in the UFC. How long have you so been working with him? him? Uh, for about uh, I don't know, two years maybe. Okay. Maybe less. Maybe less. We we met known each other for a longer time, but. There was a long period where he wasn't, uh, where he was still uh, committed to wrestling, you know. So he wouldn't. He was he was allowed to do uh, some MMA from the wrestling uh, association, but he couldn't. You know, he was he still had to focus on wrestling when he had the uh, European Championship, World Championship, and all that stuff. He had to do the, the wrestling camps, and he wasn't allowed to do MMA. But he he made the switch to full time uh, MMA. And, uh, you know, stop wrestling completely. And, and uh, after that, you know, he's really taking leaps and bounds because, you know, then he could focus on it and not just, you know, half, you know, kind of half-ass, uh, you know, interest. Before, you know, now it's, it's 100% focus on MMA, the task at hand. And, and now, right now, it's, it's, uh, he's 8-0 and, and he's made, the, made it to UFC, co-main event in his first UFC event here in Copenhagen. So yeah. he's, he's a really driven and uh, talented and just uh, he's a stud. Yeah, it's a big spot for him. As you mentioned, he's now the co-main event against Danilo Beluardo, and he's a local guy. And I'm wondering, is he the only guy that you'll be cornering on this card, or do you have anyone else? No, only only guy. Unfortunately, well, there's only two Danish guys on the Copenhagen event. You know, I, 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 I want to 
I want to complain a little bit to the UFC. Yeah. You know, I think they could have uh, put some more Danish guys in there. You know, there's there's other Danish guys that could have uh, made the shot. You know, there's uh, Mas Brunel. He was he was uh, already in the UFC. He's a stud. I would like to see him again. Sean Bach, and also of course there's Demir. He's already signed the UFC. But there's a lot of Danish guys. I would have hoped to see more Danish guys on on, uh, on a Danish UFC event. But uh, I'm happy to see Mark, of course, because I'm coaching, and and also uh, Nicholas Dabu, who's uh, who's also really looked good in his last fight so that's right i'm really excited for ufc in copenhagen yeah nicholas dalby the other one who uh was released from the ufc now coming back great story overcoming depression and alcoholism we spoke to him recently so i'm happy to see him but i agree with you i thought there would be more danish fighters for you when you were fighting and and you were you know main eventing and you were a top contender did you ever try to push for this to happen like is there a part of you that says like man i wish you guys would have come when i was an active fighter that i could experience fighting in my home country I, I never really pushed for it, to be honest with you, because back then it did, just didn't seem too realistic, you know. It, mm-hmm. it didn't seem uh, – you know, the sport is a very niche here in Denmark, and uh, it's still small, you know. It's mainly, you know, soccer and handball, and but it's gotten a lot more uh, mainstream attention, especially here after Mark uh, got into the sport because he was, you know, he's a well-known, uh, you know, athlete. You know, we, uh, Denmark is a small country, so we don't have too many uh, Olympic medalists, you know, in sports, so – him being an Olympic medalist and, and making the jump to MMA and uh, doing a great job and uh, has brought more mainstream attention to, towards the sport. And uh, I think it's definitely helping to get, uh, get more attention. But also now in Denmark, there's uh, it's every, the whole MMA scene, of course, is, is growing a lot. You know, when I, when I was in Denmark and fighting, you know, it, it was tough to get fights. I'd go to Sweden to get fights. I'd go to, you know, England, go to Russia. You know, I, I'd travel a lot. You know, now... We just had a lot more easier to get amateur fights here in Denmark. You know, there's, we had low key MMA event this week here at uh, our gym. You know, where there was an opportunity to get fights and and a lot easier to get experience. So it's growing. It's definitely growing, and it's it's, it's uh, growing a lot since uh, I started getting into MMA here in Denmark. And there's a lot of people that's done a great job helping in in, in that progress. And I'm sure you're responsible for a lot of that because for the longest time, you were the only sh- only Danish fighter fighting in the UFC and certainly the most successful. How big of a deal is this event? Like, do you feel a lot of buzz for it? Have a lot of tickets been sold? What kind of sense do you get? I think, uh, yeah, I, I, li- I don't live in Copenhagen, but I, I'm definitely, of course, I'm going to event. I'm cornering, and I feel there's uh, definitely going a lot of buzz. There's a lot of uh, mainstream uh, mainstream media that's that's caught up on it and, and writing stories, and I've been contacted about it you know, because of my history uh, in the UFC. So definitely uh, I'm expecting a, a hopefully sold-out arena, but if not, then close to sold-out arena. I think it's also it's going to bring in a lot of people from from surrounding countries, you know, because we have a lot of European fighters that's on the car. So we're going to get, you know, there's Jack Hamranson on on, uh, on the main event. You know, he's a great guy too. So they're going to be there, come down from Norway, Sweden, and and uh, there's a lot of European guys. It's going to be it's going to be a cool event. I'm really looking forward to it. After you retired, uh, we recall you coaching at Team Alpha Male and, and used to live in Las Vegas as well. Why did you eventually decide to go back home and not stay in the United States? Was that always the plan or did something come up that brought you back home? No, I, I always uh, I enjoyed living in the U.S. too. And, and, uh, but um, I've had three kids in the U.S. And uh, when you uh, get kids, it's nice to also sometimes be a little closer to your uh, your family, family, your relatives. And, and that was part of the reason moving back to Denmark was, uh, you know, I also wanted my kid to experience growing up in the, in, in Denmark. Uh, and also it's nice to be close to your, uh, you know, grandparents to take you That's sometimes, right. you know, a little relief. Oh yes. Kids. You know, you have, you have, you have a kid as well. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to get a little relief. Absolutely. I got three, you know, Yes, I have three as well, and I don't live in the same country as my parents or my in-laws. So I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a nice luxury. Yeah. Yes. And so you went back home to start coaching. Is this what you do full time now? You're a coach at this uh, Great Dane school? I'm a coach here and I do a lot of things. I also coach at a, a school for physical education, kind of where, it's, where I do some martial arts. And uh, of course, I coach Mark, who's uh, fighting this, this week here in, uh, in Copenhagen Fight Card. Um, I have a web shop with my wife, and uh, I, I have a bunch of different stuff that uh that's together making taking plenty of time but uh it's all it's all a big uh part together for the smaller pieces that makes right. up the, the whole deal when you think back on your ufc career what was your favorite moment favorite fight favorite performance favorite moment is there something that sticks out above the rest 
Um, I don't know if I have a favorite moment, you know. Uh, man, that's a tough spot. But uh, just my first fight winning in the UFC was, was definitely a big, big deal for me, you know, because I came over in the, in the U.S. and I didn't have no expectation to fight, uh, hoping to get a fight maybe on a smaller fight card. And then uh, first I got a fight on uh, WFA, which was trying to kind of compete with the UFC. They came in and brought, spent a lot of money, and, and eventually they didn't stick around UFC bought him up um I I got the opportunity to fight in UFC and that, that was really a really big deal for me back then of course every fight you know I'm, I'm a big UFC fan so yeah but just getting my my feet in the get my foot in the door and uh, getting established in the UFC was a great experience my favorite but I, have a lot Cam- of, I have a lot of fights that I like yeah the 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 Jake Ellenberger win I thought was massive for you I still believe you beat Jake Shields what do you Thank think? Thank you. Appreciate that. Do you agree? Oh, uh, man. I, I don't know. It, I, I think I uh, definitely did more damage. But to be honest with you, that's one of my fights where I was, I was really disappointed in my own performance. I thought I fought, I fought. I didn't fight a smart fight, you know. I thought I could have fought, fought uh, way smarter. So even though, uh, you know, some people think I still won it, I, I'm mostly thinking about, you know, I, was, I didn't do my best. Uh, I didn't fight smart. You know, I was making it too much of a ground fight where I could have, you know, Instead of playing, I was trying to submit him and playing into his jiu-jitsu game. I should have just pounded on him a little bit more. But, you know, you make mistakes, you learn from them. And uh, that's some of the stuff that I can carry on and, and show to the guys that I'm coaching here at uh, Great Danes and also, you know, to Mark, who's, who's fighting this week. Yeah, and of course, that fight against Diego Sanchez in Kentucky was phenomenal. The Carlos Condit fights. I mean, you have had some classics, my man. Do you ever sit back and watch them? Do you show your kids what, what, what their old man did? Do you, do you get to educate them now? Oh uh, man, it's been a while since I watched any of my fights, but really? uh, maybe I will now that you rem- maybe now that you reminded me, I'll have to go, I have to go check them out again, show them to my kids. You know, they don't ask. They see me How old's the, the oldest? Gym. He's eight. So does he have any He's sense? More, ah, you know, because I bring him to the gym sometimes. You know, I bring him to the gym, but they're uh, they're more into soccer. Everything okay. is soccer out here. Right. They'll do. I'll wrestle. I'll wrestle with them and, and stuff like that, and I'll, I'll scramble fight a little bit with them, but. Uh, they, they were doing judo for a little bit, but uh, they're not into fighting like I was. Who do they like? Peter Schmeichel? Isn't he Danish? <laughs> yeah, he's too old, though. He's, okay. They don't even know who that guy is. Didn't they, he have he a, had son? a son? Casper. Yeah. He had a son, Casper Schmeichel. He was a good goalkeeper as well. There you yeah. go. All right, so Mark Matson, look out for him, right? That's the guy this Saturday. Hey, hey another thing about him. We were at the UFC PI. This, uh, you know, we came, we're training in Vegas, came out for training camp. You know, they do those uh, strength and explosiveness tests out there. Yeah. And uh, he took the record for two out of five. Oh, wow. For 155. You know, and they said 155 is the most tested weight class. Oh, really? He's, he's a star. He's, a, he's just a, you know, different level athlete. You know, when you do the Olympics, all that wrestling, doing wrestling your whole life, he's a stud. And, and, and you... he's starting to pick up on his hands. And, and uh, of course, he's got solid wrestling. But sure. hands are getting heavy and uh, getting sharp. And um, and you yeah, guys were just we, in Kazakhstan, we, right? Yeah, we just came back from Kazakhstan because uh, United Wrestling, well, World 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 Championship in Wrestling was out there, and uh, he already committed to to doing some commentary and work for him. So uh, he wanted to, you know, honor that commitment, uh, even though he had the fight set up. So obviously, you know, uh, best thing for the fight camp would be just to not go to Kazakhstan at this time, but, <laughs> right. you know, he wanted to honor his, uh, his uh, commitment. So we went out, I went with him and we still got some good training in out there. And, uh, it was really a good experience to, of course, watch all the wrestling out there, but also to, uh, to get to enjoy Kazakhstan. I bet. Wow. All right. Well, I got to say, man, it's uh, really great to catch up with you, Martin. And I'm really happy for, uh, your success and that you're still in the fight game and now producing talent that we're going to see on display this Saturday. Like I said, when I thought of Denmark, I thought we need to catch up with uh, Martin Kampman and I'm happy that you're going to be there in some capacity. And I'm also happy that you haven't scratched that itch. I, I, I respect greatly when a fighter walks away and just walks away. And, you know, we see too often guys coming back and, you know, I understand why they come back, but they look like shells of their, their former self. So I respect you for, for ignoring that itch as much as possible and, and, and now training guys and giving back. So keep it up, my man. Uh, continued success. Good luck to Mark this weekend. We'll be watching for sure. Thanks, Ariel. Always a pleasure to talk with you.
Hello everyone, it's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.